Welcome and welcome back to the channel, guys. Real quick, yes, I'm driving, but the camera is on the stand, guys. Emergency, quick emergency. I'm headed to a buddy of mine. It's a, I think it's a 1500 truck. Okay, it's a no start. It's crank spins over, spins over, and won't start. All right, guys, here it is. Uh, 2011 Ram 1500. He said it would not start. He said it starts sometimes, guys. I have the key here, so. Let's find out how lucky we is now. Uh oh. Got it? Up. Uh oh. What that sound like? Sound like no fuel, right? <laughs> well, with a little history on the car, I was told two fuel pumps has been put on this. All right, guys. Now y'all know my thinking on the fuel pumps. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's OEM, aftermarket, garbage, brand new, fresh off the press, highly qualified, highly sophisticated, built, top of the line, made of gold fuel pump. None of that matters if you do not have a power supply and a ground supply going to the fuel pump. Okay? It just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not going to matter. All right? Now, what we have here, I think, uh, yes, I suspect it's a fuel problem, fuel issue. Fuel is not getting to it. Now, I don't have a fuel pressure gauge. That's one of the things you need to verify. Make sure fuel pressure is getting to it. Okay? And once you do that, you could uh, either eliminate fuel being your issue or not. But let me start this. Turn this over again, guys. Uh. Hit it. Yes. No fuel pressure. All right, guys. Uh, I got a pretty good sense of what's going on. In fact, uh, we're not getting any fuel pressure because we're not getting any because the fuel pump is not running. The fuel pump is not running likely because there's no power supply going to the fuel pump. Okay, you got to have a power supply on the ground. Now, I have no way of checking ground, but I can suspect the ground is there. Okay, because of the history of the vehicle. I know there's a history of the vehicle as far as the fuel system. Now, but what I can suspect based off that history is uh, that there's no power supply going to it. Now, let me say this up front. Technically, you should go to the fuel pump connector and verify this stuff. All right. I am taking a shortcut because based off uh, what I already I wouldn't call it a guess, but my suspicious, okay? You, on the other hand, should actually verify this stuff. Now, also, I'm basing this off the fact that they just put two fuel pumps on it. That is not their problem. Okay, let's go toward the electrical side of things. Ladies and gentlemen, this... Uh, God, I don't want to leave nothing out because some of you may not know none of this. But I'm going to have to. I'm going to be forced to because I got to get this truck moved. This is M25, okay? This fuse right here feeds the fuel pump. Okay, now chances of it being blown, well, I guess there could be a chance, but I highly doubt it. Doubt it. What I suspect going on is there's no power supply running through the fuse. Okay, now the power supply uh, comes from the internal circuitry of the fuel pump. The fuel pump circuitry. Okay, yes, it's supposed to feed this fuel, which will in turn send power to the fuel pump to run. That's likely not happening, okay? Uh, because there's a known issue with this tip -um, guys. This tip -um, we had problems with this tip -um. I've seen problems with this tip -um, okay? Ranging from the Grand Cherokee, the Durango, even the minivans, uh, Chrysler Town & Country, all right around this area of the 2011 and 2013, the earlier built tip of this year. Uh, let me try to explain this the best way I know how. The fuel pump... There's no physical fuel pump relay, okay? This is the this is called a tip by the way. Totally integrated power module, all right? They did away with a lot of other modules and put every responsibility in this module, all right? Now, because of that, they had to make room, okay? So they decided to ah, make the fuel pump circuitry internal to the circuit board of this module. Yes, bad idea, guys. Bad idea. All right. So, in fact, it was such a bad idea that uh, FCA uh, released a recall, okay, on the early built Grand Cherokees and the Durango to where we would actually have to make the fuel pump circuitry external. In other words, 
install an external fuel pump relay that's right guys we're gonna go over that in a second but for now we're in emergency state if you're in this same state emergency state here's what you should do you got to find a way to get power supply to this m25 fuse all right if you have a paper clip in the car just say you stranded all right you still have to find a way to get power supply to this fuse all right so what i have in my disposal because i am not in that situation and i know what i was up against when i came here uh and likely you probably should keep a jumper wire in your car <laughs> somewhere in your glove box that should lie a jumper box and again guys here's my suspicious the fuel pump is not running so what we're going to do is manually put uh 12 volts on this fuse just to cause the fuel pump to run once the fuel pump run is likely going to stay running through the duration of that drive cycle so if i manually put 12 volts on this fuse and then start it up once the fuel pump running it's gonna likely stay running like i say so let me find a way to rig this up guys hold tight all right guys i have my jumper wire going to a 12 volt fuse slot so what i'm gonna do is take this 12 volts and place it on this m25 all i'm doing is creating 12 volts on this circuit because it's not there it's not being fed by the fuel pump circuitry okay which is internal to the tip them all right now you may see a spark all i want to do is touch this y'all see that spark i can hear the fuel pump buzz every time i touch that bzz, bzz, bzz. this problem can also cause uh, your battery if you have a uh, your vehicle battery is always dead it's likely your fuel pump is always running so the bottom line is guys we got to get this fuel pump uh relay out the relay operation out of the tip them we're going to make it externally or guys here's one other option i forgot to mention this you can however simply replace the tip them yes you're going to get a completely redesigned tip them now the fuel pumps circuitry still going to be internal to the tip them it's just going to be a little bit more advanced you're going to get an updated circuit board and they likely have repaired the problems on all the unsold tip them but for now, we can't worry about that. We're in the emergency state. We're trying to get this thing to run. So again, I'm gonna touch this. I'm running. The fuel pump is running. I can hear it. Now I'm gonna go start the car and see was that enough pressure to get the car to stay running. All right, let's leave that there and go see what we got. There it go. It's running. It stayed running. So all we had to do mainly was uh, create enough, uh, enough. all we had to do really is get the car to run. Once it's run, the fuel pump will likely stay running. So by doing this, I manually commanded the fuel pump to run. <laughs> so I got some fuel pressure on the rails, likely. The fuel, fuel pressure on the rail and the fuel system, okay? Uh, so it's running. Now I can get out of my emergency state basically get home because i have to repair this all right this is a buddy of mine uh he will pay <laughs> okay just because i know this stuff don't mean you know i do this stuff for uh, free okay yes i mean he will save some money due to the mere fact that he uh but with me that's why it's always good to have a mechanic friend guys all right so i don't want to waste any more time uh i hope i cover everything um we're gonna talk some more about this circuitry guys all right stay tuned all righty uh let's get going hopefully it'll stay running and I it will because the pump is running now <laughs> you turn the car off in between your route best off all right you likely will have to do what i just did all over again now there's some companies out there guys that sell uh jumper kits okay yes they sell jumper kits but <laughs> i i don't really think you should keep that on there okay they make a kit where all you're doing is uh, maneuvering a way to leave 12 volts on that circuit. You don't want that all the time, guys, because keep in mind, your fuel pump will run all the time. That is the problem. That would be a problem, all right? So what I suggest is you get the car fixed. That's what I suggest, okay? Use that little gadget and gadget just to get out of an emergency, guys. And you will have to order that. It'll take a week to get to you, so likely it's not an emergency if that's the case. So... Like I say, your only other option, fellas, guys, is a complete tip. Uh, can you get one used? Yes, 
but I highly uh, think that you should, okay? I'm against that because you don't know the condition of that tipum. You don't know how much work that tipum has been. You don't know if that car was doing the same thing as your car. Keep in mind, guys, this tipum will fit the Chrysler Town and Country, the Dodge Durango, the Dodge 1500, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. So this tipum from 2011 and 2013. So this tipum is fairly popular. Now, what's weird and what a lot of people are complaining about is uh, FCA only chose the Grand Cherokee to recall. All right, that's right, guys. That's the only one they gave a recall. And as you know, recalls are a safety issue. Is that a safety issue? Absolutely. That could strand you somewhere. That could get you in some trouble, guys. So, yes, it is a safety issue. But they only made it for the Grand Cherokee. Now, here's another warning you should heed, guys, because let me tell you something. The kit that I'm about to use, yes, it's a typical kit that uh, we would install as a recall. Okay, you can simply build a typical ISO relay circuit and splice it in if you had the wiring diagram and you know where everything go. I am fortunate enough to know that. So that's hence why I'm going to repair the car. Now, let me tell you this last little warning. The relays that we are using, guys, are, in fact, uh, that's a problem with them. Over time, okay, over time, from what I've read, they are, silicone is melting and ending up on the contacts of the relay, which is making the relay ineffective all over again. So, guys, you will be back to square one, okay? Now, I have to install this because this is uh, what I told him, uh, what we suggest, what I suggest we get done. Especially after he told me two fuel pumps has been put on. <laughs> guys, what are the chances that you need a two fuel pump? You have to check for power supply on the ground to any kind of electrical motor. Notice, I call that a motor. Yes, that is a motor, not an engine. <laughs> so, yes, you got to have 12 volt supply and ground to make that fuel pump work. Now, what are we going to do about the potential hazards of me installing a brand new so-called bad relay? All right. I have no choice at this point, fellas. Okay, uh, guy needs his car, his truck, and we got to get it going. But I will say, and I will inform him, the relay is going to be external, right? I'm about to bolt it to the side of the firewall. So what he can do is uh, I leave him a typical ISO relay in his glove box. Until, oh, this is only temporary. Nothing is permanent. This is temporary until the good relays get here. Uh, that relay uh, is in the form of another recall, V62. So just about every recall we have done on R09 uh, is being re-recalled, all right? Now, the recall is nothing major. All we're doing is simply replacing uh, that relay that we installed during R09, okay? So we will, in essence, be recalling a recall. But this video is too long, guys, so uh, that's going to be a part two. I'll actually show you all the repair. So we get in there and dive in there. I'm going to show you the circuit, uh, what hooks up where, where you need to hook up, and uh, why you need to hook up, what you will hook, need to hook up. Now, the big question, JT, is this a DIY job? Is this a do-it-yourself job? Uh, and my answer is perhaps. Yes, it could be, okay, depending on your electrical skills. Now, I'm about to do some soldering. I'm about to do some heat shrinking. I'm about to use some uh, solder. I will be using a heat gun and a soldering gun, okay, a uh, crimper. I'm going to crimp some things. I'm going to splice into to some things. I am going to do some electrical repairs. All right, guys, so uh if you're good at that then yes this could be considered a diy job all right i don't want to talk and ramble on and on and on you guys want to see some blank holes and elbows all right so that's what i'm gonna get you guys we're gonna start work on this truck on the next video part two okay yes i'm sorry fellas i'm not at my destination i hate leaving videos open there will be a part two but the good part about part two is like i say oh the good part about one and two this repair applied to those four vehicles I named earlier. So if you have that problem on any of those four vehicles, 
this is likely your problem. Be careful before you just go shell out five, six hundred dollars on a fuel pump that you may not need. All right, stay tuned for part two. I will be right back.